Welcome to another episode of The, the Epic, Epic Family, Family Road, Road Trip. Trip. When the morning stands. On this week's episode, we drive from Flagstaff down to Phoenix area. We're in Phoenix for a couple of reasons. One, because I need to fly out and do a couple of speaking engagements, one in Niagara Falls, Canada, and one in Nashville. And the other reason is because we are getting some work done on Vandy the Jeep. We're getting um, some new air filters put in by the, the boys and also some new AEV high tension or high capacity coil springs. With all the weight we have on the back, these things were much needed and AEV makes a really awesome set of springs. When the day is long. Now that we're here, we gotta get everything set up and uh, this will be the first time in a while at least without Father doing it with us. He's going on a business trip right now for some speaking. So he'll be gone until Tuesday, it's Sunday now, so a few days. So uh, as we were pulling in here, we had to back up into our site and uh, Mom let me do it. It's my first time backing up a trailer actually and uh, it was pretty interesting. It's in a weird spot on the road and I couldn't get it for a long time but one of the uh, volunteer rangers that was going by, we were holding him up on the road but he came out to help and kind of taught me how to do the whole reverse thing and with our trailer it's a pretty weavy one but uh, it was interesting. We got it done finally and it was good to learn. Here in Niagara Falls, Canada, right by the falls, actually. They're roaring in the distance there. You can't see them because of the mist coming off. There's still some snow and ice in there, but um, I'm here to give the keynote speech, the closing keynote for the Canadian Franchise Association. Um, I love sharing the culture of care and talking about how care can really impact people's lives and business at home and out in the communities in which they operate. So looking forward to it. It's gonna be a fun time. And uh, meanwhile, my family's uh, back in the Jeep in somewhere in the desert. And I can't wait to get back and see them as well. When we were, before Dad was leaving, when we were at the KOA, we noticed that our propane had run out of propane, so we can't use our kitchen in the back. We had meant to fill it up when we were dropping him off at the airport, but we actually forgot, and now we got the camp set up here, and we're quite a ways out of town, so instead of using a stove to fry up some fish um, and potatoes, we're gonna be using hot coals of a fire. So we'll see how that goes. So we're just lighting the fire to get some uh, a good bed of coals to put the fish on. And we're going to be using the 9 volt battery and steel wool. 
which can be dangerous if you hold it too long. So if you're going to be doing this afterwards, just tap it because it'll get going. And then blowing on it will uh, make it light off. We just peeled some of the bark off of the wood we're using. We're going to use that. My dear, life won't wait. My Oh, now it's gone. We got the fish all in its Cajun beer batter and dill, and now we're gonna put it on the scuttle. This hike that we're about to do, we gotta take a ton of water, so I'm gonna be taking a lot in my bag because we are in the desert and it gets really hot during the day. And it'll be about five to six hours of just fairly strenuous hiking in the heat. And the time that we're leaving now, we're gonna be in direct sun most of the time. We're trying to get to flat iron, so we're just gonna go straight up. So we're about 40 minutes into our hike. Um, we're doing a trail called Siphon Draw Trail. It's about five hours, but the ranger said to give yourself an extra hour. So around six, uh, it's 4.3 miles, and it's uh, around a 4,300 uh, elevation gain, like feet. And yeah, we started out at six in the morning. It's starting because we wanted to beat the sun. So I'm just loaded down with water in my pack because we are in Arizona. We're gonna try to get up there start climbing it before the sun gets too hot because some guys that were just going up the trail said that uh, it gets pretty gnarly up ahead. top of the hike it was beautiful the trail wasn't what we expected it happened to be a really steep scramble over rocks and things but it was epic and the views are insane After making it to the top of this epic hike, we're now going down, and it was beauty. We kind of overpacked on the water, thought it'd be a little bit hotter, but we did make it up earlier than we thought. The sun's not too hot right now, so it's beauty. Hey 
guys, so today we're going to be installing these two SuperTech air filters into our 2012 Jeep Wrangler. Air filters are a super important part of the vehicle. They keep the cabin air as well as the engine air clean, and that is also extremely important while you're overlanding because we're driving through dust and mud all the time, and it just really helps. These are up to 20,000 miles or 32,000 kilometers of protection, and that's more for regular roads and stuff, but again, try to change it more regularly if you're gonna be off-roading or in places with more pollens or dust or allergies around. Installing air filters in a Jeep is actually very simple. All we do is remove the glove box and then open up the place where the air filter goes in, which I'll show. And yeah, aftermarket air filters like these, uh, SuperTech ones will come in two pieces to make it easier to get in, because having a speaker right here actually adds a big box where it's hard to open up that last uh, cage thing. So having two separate pieces, we can just put them in one at a time and then fit them together and it fits perfectly. So to install it, all you need to look at is this one little piece here, where there's this mesh cage blocking it. To open it, there's these two clips here and all you do is push down and they open very simply. Again, with this speaker here, this one's pretty hard to open and we actually won't need to open it to fit it in there. But another interesting thing is, is there is this cover that blocks the uh, place where you're going to be putting the air filter in. And just to open that up, all you do is make sure that the air's on at least a little bit, push the circulator button and that actually opens. And then now you have access to this area where the filter goes. So now that everything's all open, we just need to install it and take it out of the box. So with air filters though, there is a correct way to put them in. There is a top and a bottom, and there is always an arrow that's pointing to which side's the bottom and which way it's gonna be facing. You can stick them straight in, and there will be pieces that plastic in there that helps you guide it right into the proper position. As I said, aftermarket ones come in two pieces, which just allows it to fit in a lot easier. So for this, we're just gonna put the one in. The air filters are all nicely in there. It took just a minute of jimmying them in there to get it fitting right. What I just did was stuck it in on the right side and folded it down and then I could push them down together since they are two separate pieces. Um, but Jeeps are not just like cars with cars. When you open up the glove, you slide out this tray and then you can place them down in there all nice. This one, you know, because of that speaker again, it makes it tight and kind of harder, but at the end they fit really simply and they're all Now we're installing the engine's air filter. We're just gonna pop the hood and then I'll show you how to install it. Right here is the air filter. We actually have a snorkel hooked up to it. Doing the engine's air filter is actually very simple. All there is is two bolts that you can use a 10 mil socket wrench. It's probably the best wrench to do it. Using the 10 mil ratchet wrench, we're just gonna take off these two bolts. And once they're off, there's only, like I said, four pins to remove and then it's just sticking in the air filter and replacing the old one. A uh, socket wrench would be a lot easier to do this because it would fit in place, but since we are doing this in the field, uh, ratchet's the best we got, but it does work. All right, so I'm just gonna take off these clips, this one and then the really far one down there, if I can reach it. All right, now you just lift it up out the air filter, our old dirty one. Now we can replace it with a nice new one. Literally for installing this one, you just set it in there, make it all nice and tight, and then pull the thing back down over it, and push in the, tighten it up with those bolts, and then clip on these little clips. And that's the thing we love about SuperTech. They're super high quality, all made in the United States, and extremely easy to use and set up. That's a wrap to the installation. If you're interested, these air filters that we use are in the link below. They're made by SuperTech. They're a great company and they're awesome. So we're here at Total Auto Pro in 
Phoenix and they are an AEV dealer and we're getting uh, the new high capacity uh, coil springs put on the Jeep. We've, uh, they, they weren't available when we built the Jeep and uh, put the AEV suspension in but they came out last year and these, ex these uh, springs are exactly what we need. Um, over the years the weight keeps going on the Jeep, the kids are a lot bigger and heavier, the, we've got the rooftop tent, we've got the kitchen in the back, all our gear, food and everything. And then we put five bikes on the back, so she's sagging a bit. Got the uh, AEV high capacity springs put on, and so it should ride a lot more solid. It, it definitely sitting a little higher, and uh, we'll let you know how it goes when we get the kids in the back. We've, we've got all the other weight on except the mountain bikes and the kids, so once that's in, we'll let you know how it rides. But I think it's going to be great. Let's take her for a spin. Hope you enjoyed this week's video. Stay tuned for a new adventure every single week. Make sure you jump onto Instagram, go to at Epic Family Road Trip. We have a giveaway going on right now with some awesome overlanding gear. Make sure you get involved. You do not want to miss out on that. We're going to be at Overland Expo West, and we hope to see you there. It's coming up on the 17th, 18th, and 19th of May in Flagstaff, Arizona. So if you're in the area, come by and say hi. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and click one of the links at the end here to watch one of our other videos and uh, support the channel. And in the meantime, we'll, we'll see you down, down the road. road.